The first two weeks of 2021 have, so far, been marked by an incredible increase in Israeli activity in the skies over Syria. The most intense strike took place on the morning of January the 13th, hitting multiple Syrian and Iranian-affiliated targets in the province of Deir Azor, including the underground base of the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Corps near Al-Bukamal. The pro-opposition Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that Israeli strikes have killed 57 and wounded another 37. Pro-government sources confirmed only five casualties. The airstrikes were so numerous that even Abu Yatem al Qatrani, the commander of the Iraqi Popular Mobilization Unit's PMU, 4th Brigade, was killed in an airstrike. The Israeli operations were carried out with the assistance of the United States, which provided intelligence on the targets which Israel then attacked. Former CIA Director, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, reportedly discussed the airstrikes with Yossi Cohen, chief of Israel's spy agency Mossad. The US support of Tel Aviv's aerial raids is a clear message to Iran and demonstrates very open support for Israel's undeclared war on Iran, which it has been waging in Syria since hostilities began. All of the airstrikes in the first two weeks of 2021 are among the most significant carried out by Israel or any other power since the beginning of the war in Syria. They were so significant that Damascus even accused Tel Aviv of carrying out the strikes in a very open support of the ISIS militants who were being hunted down by the Syrian Arab army. Meanwhile, there appears to be a sense of urgency or a sense of danger in the air as the United States reinforced its troop positions in the Omar oil fields with artillery pieces and other equipment. The US troops, together with their local proxies, also hold frequent drills in the area to keep ready for some potential future escalation. Prior to New Year's Eve, Iran's top nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh was assassinated in what Tehran claimed was an elaborate Israeli operation. Additionally, since around the same time, a farewell strike on Iran has been expected from US President Donald Trump, and the general chaos in the US ahead of Joe Biden stepping into office has been used by Israel as a chance to inflict as much damage as possible on Tehran and its allies. Russia, at the same time, appears also to be preparing for an escalation of some sort by building up its forces and is now lying in wait. Israel appears dead set on continuing its crusade against Iran and its allies in Syria. An urgency is felt since Biden is unlikely to support Tel Aviv as much as Trump did and every possible chance should be used. This is all in spite of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu removing the photo of Donald Trump from his Twitter, but all is fair in love and war. Finally, both the American and Russian forces appear to be biding their time, waiting for an escalation that with tensions at breaking point appears closer than ever. The year began with terrorist attacks in Syria, increased Israeli strikes, and with Iran threatening to retaliate against any aggression perpetrated against it. The two most significant players, Moscow and Washington, are both expecting an escalation. Will any amount of preparation be enough for the incoming storm?